Hi folks, so the first video of 2019, it's going to be a rambly video. I know you guys tend to enjoy that format and it always brings out the best comments. So I thought why not start 2019 off on a strong note. Now just before I crack on with today's discussion, I just want to let you guys know that I've been streaming over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash chrisware for every single day this month. And uh, I'm just sort of doing it, just throwing myself into the platform wholeheartedly just to see uh, what it's like, what works, what doesn't. And uh, yeah, I've been having quite a hoot over there. Uh, we usually just have a bit of a, a chat, usually over a video game of some variety or another. And uh, yeah, if you guys uh, want to see more of me, then uh, yeah, check out twitch.tv forward slash Chris Ware. There may be fewer videos uploaded onto this channel during the month of January as a result. Just a bit of a heads up there. But uh, I'll try and make what I upload to be... Um, as good as possible, I guess. But anyway, when February comes around, um, I'll uh, reevaluate the uh, the schedule there. So, um, and also just as a bit of a side note, this might be a good time to point out that I have a Patreon. So if you just happen to have any cash lying around, um, just uh, just 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 a, just a suggestion. Anyway, uh, so what I wanted to talk about today is a bit of a comparison between Arch-based distributions and Ubuntu slash Debian based distributions. Now Ubuntu is based on Debian, so uh, I'm kind of uh, categorizing them in the uh, in the same chunk here. Now both Ubuntu based distributions and Arch distributions are distributions that I tend to associate with home use rather than, for example, enterprise use, where I would usually uh, look more towards Fedora and and OpenSUSE and the likes. Now that is by no means a hard and fast rule. And generally speaking, when it comes to distributions. There aren't right or wrong answers, uh, and you know what you can get from Arch, you can often get in Ubuntu, just in different ways. And I think that's a large part of of what Linux is. Linux is a collection of operating systems uh, of you know completely different operating systems that share a common kernel. So there are significant differences between distribution to distribution. However, a lot of distributions now use very similar software stacks. They use the same kernel or similar kernels or similar builds of the kernel. They use you know things like System D. They'll use Light DM. They'll use GNOME, KDE, Mate, XFC. You know they use one of the environments. So a distribution in, in a lot of cases is a collection of software. And also one uh, noteworthy difference between distributions is uh, their package manager. How they're packaged, how often they're updated, what you've got to update, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, the options that you have there within. So uh, on a very technical level, there are a lot of things to think about when picking out your distribution for day-to-day for -day use. And it's intimidating to a lot of newcomers to Linux, which, um, you know, it, it's, it's certainly uh, justified that, that intimidation because now instead of uh, living in a world where there was only one, maybe a second operating system, you now have entered a world where there are two, maybe 300 operating systems. It's a little bit of a step up or a different realm to be in is that people aren't necessarily used to so much choice and they can get a little bit intimidated, which broadly speaking, is when I tend to recommend something like Linux Mint uh, onto, uh, for, for them to use. Now, that being said, Linux Mint doesn't actually get as many recommendations as I usually recommend it because Linux Mint, especially the Cinnamon Edition, which is absolutely wonderful, does require a pretty hefty amount of memory to run when you compare it with things like Mate and um, an XFCE and even things a little bit more lighter. Like I've installed Lubuntu with LXDE uh, onto newbie, new, you know, laptops that belong to newbies and they've gotten on with that just fine. Like Lubuntu is a very underrated distribution for newcomers to Linux. You can set it up perfectly. But the thing is with something like Lubuntu is that there's so little to go wrong because you've got so many limited options in menus and all that kind of stuff. And it's very, very clear when you're in a configuration screen and when you're not. So I don't know. I think there's there's more to be said for something like Lubuntu than a lot of people on YouTube, i.e. me, give it credit for in a lot of cases. So um, anyway, getting a little bit off tack it, uh, getting a little bit off topic but this is a rambly video i'm going to keep iterating that because you know if you if you're in now like below the 5 minute mark um you've 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 got an out this is an out this is going to be rambly this is going to be typical for the video going going forward so so i'm currently running manjaro on this machine uh, and linux mx um 17.1 on my laptop here so i've got desktop here uh, manjaro fully up to date and i've got Linux Mint. No, I don't. I've got Linux MX 17.1. Okay, so uh, the differences between the two laptops in my day-to-day -day, day -day use, this uses games and multimedia. Linux MX does a lot of other things that's, you know, more administrative, more, uh, uh, you know, watching YouTube, more basic tasks, really. But then it's a it's an entry-level laptop, and that's the sort of things that you'd expect from an entry-level laptop. 
MX Linux is a very lightweight distribution, runs very, very smoothly on this laptop. And to be honest, I'm not even looking to really move away from it, to be honest. Uh, I know that uh, Linux MX 18 is just around the corner now, and that's going to be tempting to look at. But I've got to be honest, I've got this laptop just the way I like it. Like if there's a bit more support behind MX um, Linux uh, 17.1 then I might hang on to that distribution for a while but maybe not I don't know well anyway I'll work out the laptop this video isn't about the laptop this video is about the desktop and about uh, Manjaro now first off of the bat Manjaro has treated me absolutely wonderfully it's never uh, it's never um, wrecked an upgrade uh, it boots up in uh, something like 10 seconds I think I did measure it and I think it goes from from when it exits exits the BIOS screen to when it gets to the login screen is about seven seconds it's remarkable i remember i was on a support ticket uh technical support ticket on this machine and they asked me to restart my machine i restarted it and then they said hang on a minute, you didn't restart your machine you you just you, you know it, it machines take several minutes to restart i go well manjaro on an ssd eh so um Steam works, all the all the programs work, and one of the things that I really do like about Manjaro is that it has really good repositories. In fact, uh, some of the people who use Manjaro, the, you know, in terms of peers, and I ask them why they use Manjaro, they generally say they kind of want Arch, but with a few extra specific packages in the native re repo that they'd rather not go to the AUR for, because the AUR, and a lot of people tend to sort of gloss over this, the AUR is not really that much different from going off to a website and downloading a, an executable binary or whatever, and then running it yourself. It's just a more automated process of that. Like, yeah, there are organizations that uh, port their official Arch uh, port to the AUR, you know, their official Arch build to the AUR, um, and, they, and they, they're happy with that, and that does work, like, that's a good way of publishing your software if you don't want to go through the distro politics of getting it uh, in a distribution's native repositories. The AUR is a great way to, to um, get your software out there, but on the other hand, anyone can just put stuff into the AUR. Yes, it can be reported. Yes, it can be taken down. Yes, it can be, you know, people can sort of share information. So I guess it's maybe a little bit safer in that regard, if you do your research, if you do your research. Um, but uh, but a lot of people will just install something from the AUR without so much as looking at the comment section on, I think it's aur.archlinux.org, you know, the AUR website where you've got to look it up. Another interesting side note, because this is a rambly video, if you happen to be using DuckDuckGo and you want to search the AUR, you all you've got to do is uh, exclamation mark AUR space and your search term, and you're going to search for packages in the AUR through DuckDuckGo. Pretty, pretty wonderful, isn't it? Pretty, pretty cool life hack there for you. So, if Manjaro and Manjaro runs Steam wonderfully, it runs Audacity wonderfully, it runs OBS wonderfully. It, you know, it's it's the device that I have been running every single live stream this year on Twitch on, uh, and we've had very, very few technical problems when it comes to streaming. Streaming has been absolutely wonderful. Um, all my VPN stuff works, all my security stuff works, all my firewall stuff works, Sh Redshift works wonderfully. Uh, th and the thing about rolling distributions, which is a real benefit, is that if you've got a quirk or a problem with the with the operating system and you fix it, you don't have to then, or there's a good chance, you won't have to then return to that problem until there's a fresh install, which could be several years down the line. Um, and I don't necessarily know really how often you would be expected to install Manjaro. So a good comment question that I do want to throw out there is if you are running Manjaro, you're running Arch, you're rolling Solus or any rolling distribution, let me know like what's the longest you've ever used it without reinstalling. Because every time I upgrade Manjaro, even though it's never happened to me, I'm always suspecting a breakage like there's always something in the back of my head it could break it could break and to be fair that little uh you know the voice at the back of my head also is there for any other distribution but with uh with rolling because the upgrades tend to be beefier they tend to be bigger they tend to be something of a higher risk um for, for things like breakage then you tend to you know then 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 you tend to sort of get a bit on edge about uh, upgrading a little bit but you know good backups always essential good backups always essential so in theory you can be running a rolling release uh, like manjaro like arch almost indefinitely almost indefinitely although one day you know there's a good chance that an update will break it and it could be user error it could be uh, a problem with with the os itself and i know people who have had Arch-based systems break on them. I know people who have had Anteogos break on them. Um, and I, I'm sure I know people who have had Manjaro break on them as well. It's just because it's never happened to me, it's like my perspective is kind of... Uh, 
it's the one that I'm leaning on, even you know, rightly or wrongly on, on that side of things. But Manjaro also is a beat behind with its upgrade. So Arch will upgrade, and then Manjaro will hold back a little bit, and then upgrade maybe a couple of weeks uh, down the line. Sometimes even less, I'm told. Uh, when it uh, so that uh, they so that Arch is sort of acting as a testing ground, as a bit of a sandbox to try out all uh, the new updated software to see if there are any you know. Uh, deal breaking bugs or anything like that and then Manjaro can address them further on down the pipeline it's quite a good system in my opinion and it's always worked out well for uh, for this distribution here and if you want something that's a bit more up to date m something a bit more in line with Arch but also brings the benefit of Manjaro I do believe that that is essentially what the Manjaro beta is as well so all in all, Manjaro, definitely one of my favorite distributions out there. Definitely one, in, in my opinion, the best distributions out there. One of the distributions that I think, if you've got a home computer that you game and do multimedia on and you want up-to-date software, um, and it's like your main machine, then Manjaro, you you know, you really can't go wrong with it. Like, I'm not going wrong here. I, you know, I'm, this is not a, um, a machine that I am actually having any problems with. However, um, I am looking at comparing it with an Arch-based system. Not an Arch-based system. I'm looking at comparing it with a Ubuntu-based system to see what some of the advantages might be. Now, I'm sure um, there are more people watching this video that are familiar with Ubuntu than Manjaro. And when I say Manjaro, that's like a personal... Um, uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, my personal sort of perspective on this. But when I'm sort of speaking about Manjaro, in many ways, I'm sort of talking about um, many, if not all, of the Arch-based distributions because they all tend to follow that kind of model. I actually would think that there's a really good space in the market for um, for, for basically taking an Arch base and then um, sort of, you know, feature freezing it and 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 processing it as scheduled um, upgrades in a very similar in a very similar process to what uh, some distributions like Ubuntu used to do with the Debian testing branch, where they'd uh, snapshot it and they'd um, secure it from that snapshot and then they'd release it, which was... Uh, uh, and it'd be interesting to see if something like that would be done with Arch, where you'd actually take a, you know, the, the, the rolling base and then just turn it into a scheduled distribution. Now, I don't necessarily know if that's practical, wise, or, you know, straightforward, or or even, you know, a good idea, all things considered. But it'd be, it's something that would be, you know, be an interesting addition to the distro watch rankings, certainly. So, if I'm so happy with Manjaro, why am I looking across to Ubuntu-based distributions? Well, there are some significant differences between Ubuntu Ubuntu based distributions. Now Ubuntu, I'm going to use Ubuntu as an example, but it can be used as a bit of a stand-in for any distribution where they have about six monthly release cycles uh, or even just regular release cycles uh, in all honesty. Um, so with Manjaro there are some overheads that are worth acknowledging. Now the first overhead is uh, the updates. You have to download a lot more updates a lot more frequently. So if you're not on a great internet connection, this is going to hit you reasonably hard. And if you are on a, on a poorer quality internet connection, it may be worth looking across to Ubuntu-based distributions um, for, for, for similar reasons. Now, that being said, my internet connection is pretty darn good. It's not amazing, but it, it's about as good as I can really expect as a, uh, as a it's about as good as I can really expect. Uh, and um, and it does seem to handle those particular updates reasonably well, but it still is a bit of a chore, especially when those updates come in, you know, sort of um, unideal moments or when you're in the middle of stuff or, uh, you know, in the middle of like longer term projects or uh, when you are not really in a position to restart your machine or that kind of stuff. And yes, this isn't Windows 10. You can update whenever you want, but the longer you leave those updates, the more problems that you may come up against as a result. So, um, yes, there's more updates more regularly, and uh, that can be a little bit of... Uh, it can increase the degree of maintenance as well, because when you upgrade an, a rolling release, everything gets upgraded, you know, the versions of all, all of your software that isn't installed separate from the operating system. Uh, and that means that even though your operating system might not break, an application here might break or an application here might work differently. And there is some reassurance in when you install an operating system, especially at the beginning of its long-term release cycle, i.e. Ubuntu, that you're not going to get too many uh, massive um, changes in your software. Like your workflow can be reasonably guaranteed to be the same until you decide to uh, upgrade the operating system when it comes to end of life or 
if you decide to switch. So when you've got a long-term scheduled uh, release, you've got a very guaranteed workflow. And when it comes to someone that's generating regular content and all that kind of thing, that is a kind of uh, sort of workflow that is kind of appealing, is having something that's a bit more reliable. Again, I'm not necessarily saying that Manjaro is going to go down on me. It hasn't yet, and uh, I've got no reason to suspect it would. So these are still things that I'm, I'm weighing up in the overall equation, and I'd be interesting to hear if you've got any horror stories of any of the distributions that I'm talking about today as a bit of a warning to uh, fellow Linux travelers. But... Um, but being able to set up your workflow and expect that to work for the next five years is something that has a real appeal to it. Um, and of course, uh, um, Ubuntu uh, are not shy about um, extending some of their uh, longer term, the support on some of their longer term uh, support distributions because of their use on the server as well. So there's, you know, there is possibility that you could even last longer than the um, than the initial support release cycle. So anyway. Um, what else is there? Well, the down with the maintenance with Ubuntu is a lot smaller and a lot, uh, a lot less frequent. I guess it tends to be security updates, which are the ones that uh, that, that Ubuntu want you to uh, want you to pick up the most, and that's obviously because they, you know, you, you, systems are supposed to be as secure as possible by design. Therefore, the security updates always get uh, get fired out pretty much on any distribution that you're on, or at least they should be. Um, also, when it comes to software like new software, when new software comes to Linux, it is built for Ubuntu. It is not built for Manjaro. It is not built for Arch. That being said, there are usually uh, in, well, there's usually an entire army of people, the army of, of, of community volunteers on hand to port something from Ubuntu into the AUR at a moment's notice. And almost anything that you can get on Ubuntu, you can get either in Arch or in the AUR. But when new software does come out, they do port it to Ubuntu. So uh, you don't necessarily get that level of support. You don't necessarily get that level of the same number, you know, the, the, the same size of the user base when you're, run, when you're running something built for Ubuntu on an Arch-based distribution. So you do have... Uh, you do have that as well. But yeah, the community touch of Manjaro is actually, you know, it's very visible. And that's one of the things that I really do quite like about uh, Manjaro is that um, even if you go through to the uh, discussion forums, you can see them talking about, uh, you know, upgrade processes, which kernels they should build, software included in the repos, all this kind of stuff. And it, and it has a very community-esque feel. Like Manjaro is the kind of distribution that is made for the community that support it. And you can see, you know, through little touches, like, you know, it isn't idiot proof. Um, you know, you do need to have some degree of knowledge of, of a computer to use it. You do need to actually sort of apply yourself in a in a, in a limited capacity. Um, but then, yeah, it doesn't make things more difficult than necessary. You know, it's not like the Gen 2 effect or anything like that. Like, it's, it gives you a very reasonable, very good system out of the box. In fact, I'll, so one thing I will say about Manjaro is that alongside with Mint, it's one of those distributions that needs very little setting up for it to be usable for me. It's just a matter of installing the programs that I use, bang, out of the door. Um, and with actually with Linux Mint, a lot of those programs are pre-installed as they are with Manjaro. So it's it's a case of the, the number of programs I have to install out of the gate is actually significantly fewer than with most other distributions. It's a bit of a side note because once you've set up your distribution the way you like it, it's, it's there until you decide to change or until your uh, distribution uh, is no longer supported. So now all that said, um, as much as I will praise the community aspects of Manjaro, uh, there are also significant community aspects of Ubuntu, uh, particularly the remixes is, is where you really see the community shine. Um, but yeah, there, there's a strong community um, element to Ubuntu as well. But when you do have Canonical behind the whole thing, um, it is uh, it changes the dynamics a little bit. But um, you know, not uh, not to the point where I think it would make me choose one distro over the other. Uh, these are just different, you know, it's just different ways that distros are put together, different sort of origins, different methodology to how they're put together, different decisions being made, all that kind of stuff. And it's that level of diversity that I really think makes the e Linux ecosystem as strong as it is today. And, um, you know, and, and it is like, you know, you, you look back 10 years and... Um, and and and, uh, and and you can see how far we've come when it comes to Linux based operating systems, especially on the desktop. So uh, I think I have rambled quite enough for this video. I'm just going to start wrapping it up now. Um, have I decided that I'm going to ditch Manjaro for Ubuntu? I have not decided completely. Which remix of Ubuntu would I use? Again, have not decided. It would likely be Mate or Zubuntu because those are both 
Um, they're both customizable uh, desktop environments, uh, which um, allow me to, you know, switch out things like window managers and uh, and file managers and all that kind of stuff if I don't like them. And I always kind of like those customizable desktop environments. Um, I do quite like things like Cinnamon, which is more of a um, pre-set up off the off the rack kind of. Um, a desktop environment because they the sort of the universal interface is great for newcomers to Linux. It's great for people that that don't care about you know the the intricacies of their user interface that just want to get on with stuff. You know, Cinnamon's great with things like that. But for my personal use case, um, yeah, Mate and, and XFCE is great. I I I do like a customizable desktop environment because it just gives you that many more options to tweak, especially for performance, for games, for for. Um, Digital media stuff like that. Having a customizable disc, uh, desktop environment just has a few has a few um, fringe benefits there. But uh, uh, and also I do kind of like that um, Mate and XFCE just have a great running speed. They don't have fancy animations stuff like that. They don't use too much RAM and uh, and and you know the windows are very responsive. So th there's that tends to be while why why I tend to lean towards those desktop environments. But maybe I'll be doing another Rambly video on desktop environments since I've pretty much tried them all at this point. So. Um, but yeah, so to summarize, uh, benefits of Manjaro, more up-to-date software, um, a huge, like the AUR, although mm, Ubuntu can sort of kind of keep up with that. Um, also, Manjaro has great flat pack support. Um, I've tried snaps on it, but as a, br uh, as a general um, rule, uh, flat packs tend to work uh, tend to work better on it. I've had a few snaps that work pretty well on on something like Ubuntu, but then over on on um, Arch-based distributions, they don't tend to work so well. Uh, with flat packs, I do tend to find that they um, they tend to work quite well uh, across the board. Uh, app images, actually, I find with app images are a bit of a mixed bag, and it depends on the app image in question. Like most app images are probably built with Ubuntu in mind and thus tested against Ubuntu. So yeah, I've I've come up against the occasional problem with some app images, not all of them. And again, with app images, it's on a, a on an app image by app image basis. So for example, the app image for Caden Live, it works pretty wonderfully on uh, Manjaro. And it's one that I often tend to use. I'm actually using the Flatpak one now, but I often break into the uh, the app image um, Caden Live as well, because they both work really, really, really well. So all things considered, Manjaro and Ubuntu are not exactly worlds apart. They're made up of, of a lot of the same software, albeit different versions dis distributed in different ways. And I would say that the biggest difference is the package manager and the software that it has available to it and how you acquire that software. Because although a lot of software is built for Linux, the a lot of software that is built for Linux is being built for Ubuntu and not Manjaro. Manjaro is particularly good at taking an Ubuntu dev file and then just sticking it in the AUR. So when it comes to uh, software, I don't necessarily know which one has the edge here, especially when you bring into uh, you know when you bring into the discussion things like flat packs and snaps and app images, which really do reduce the difference between distribution to distribution. And that in some ways is kind of one of my one of the reasons why I'm I'm looking back to Ubuntu is because yeah, maybe the base operating system doesn't need to have the latest and greatest software. Maybe I can just pick out the core pieces of software that I want to, to have the latest versions of and then just get the flat pack of them, get the app image of them, get the snap of them, and and then just rely on the base operating system for the stability and then use the flat packs for the more up-to-date stuff. I did a bit of a challenge when I installed Manjaro and that's not to use the AUR but to use flat packs first as much as possible. And the only AUR application that I've got, I believe, is the Itch.io client, which you can actually install without the AUR. So is that. But yeah, the only um, the only application I've got from the AUR is the, the Itch.io client, which is pretty good, uh, especially for an Electron app. It's, you know, it's a really, you know, good, good, uh, well-made app for an Electron app as well. I know that Electron gets a bad press, but the Itch.io app is pretty wonderful and open source as well. So anyway, um, but yeah, everything else was flat packed. And I've got to say, it's all pretty good. It's all pretty wonderful. Uh, I like the fact that you update flat packs separately from your main system, or you sort of can at least choose that. So um, you can then wait until you finished a big project before then upgrading all your flat packs. And um, yeah, in general, I found flat packs to be a pretty wonderful experience. And that could be a significant part of my driving force behind looking over to Ubuntu because um, in a few years time, I'm going to be honest, the, the differences between distribution to distribution is going to shrink even more. 
right? And the difference, and, and we'll be choosing between, well, I would say we'll be choosing between Flatpak Snap and App Images. We'll probably be using all three, you know, and, um, or, you know, and, and a combination of all three. And that's pretty wonderful as well, because there's no problem with using, uh, you know, a Snap for this and a Flatpak for that and an App Image for that. Like, it, that's the wonder of, of, of Linux and, and Linux based operating systems, is that you just get that choice. So, uh, I may very well, you know, I, I, I've worked out that I don't need the AUR. Most, if not, well, everything of what I can get, I can generally get from either distributed binaries, app image snaps, flat packs, etc. Uh, and Manjaro has a pretty wonderful uh, base repository anyway, um, as does Ubuntu, actually. I've been talking about Manjaro like it's got all the applications, but Ubuntu's got great apps in its uh, repositories as well. Um, so... Yeah, I've got to say, I'm going to mull it over and I'll probably um, let you guys know in a future video. Let me know your guys' thoughts on, uh, you know, rolling releases versus scheduled releases, uh, you know, Manjaro versus Ubuntu. Let me know your thoughts on uh, on that kind of uh, thought. But I've just been thinking about this quite a lot and, and, um, and I'm a distro hopper at heart and I've been on this Manjaro install now for a good number of months, maybe half a year or so, maybe even more actually. And it hasn't even hiccuped. It hasn't, it hasn't, you know, so, so it's important to bear in mind that I'm not thinking about leaving Manjaro because it's in any way not proven to be a great operating system, but arguably the reason that I probably am looking over to Ubuntu more than anything else is that I can get a, the same stuff done with less maintenance uh, and, uh, and less, you know, and, and with a bit more structure. But again, you know, um, it's still up in the air because Manjaro's got a hell of a lot to offer. Um, so anyway, guys, those are just my thoughts. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know yours down in the comment section below. Don't forget to check me out on Twitch. And also there's a Patreon if you happen to have any, you know, if there's, if there's any cash that's weighing you down, then uh, then don't worry, I can, uh, I'll take it off your hands. So anyway, that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.